Good evening, Ridgecrest, China Lake, Inya Kern, and the Indian Wells Valley, and welcome to the Thursday evening edition of Ridgecrest Talk. I'm your co-host, Robert Ironman, along with Al Huey, and tonight we're pleased to have with us Councilman Jim Sanders and Mike Neal, and we're going to be discussing the um, Dale Howard case and the history of it, and also maybe a little bit about where it's going to go. So. Al, you want to start? Well, yeah. Um, I, I'd like everybody to know that Robert and I have spent quite a bit of time in the last few days looking into this. Many uh, hours. Many hours. <clears throat> we first met with uh, the district attorney, sat down with him for, gosh. He was kind enough, an hour and a half. Yeah, I think. yeah. Wow. and talk to him about the case as far as the DA's office was concerned and uh, regarding the law that uh, he went to trial on the nuisance, yes, uh, public nuisance that just ended last Friday and he was a, he was uh, had uh, 12 charges. Yes. 11 of those he was acquitted of and one was one was hung hung jury eight and three or nine not, three nine three and they elected the district attorney elected to dismiss the case right that part of it and uh, to be quite honest personally I was surprised that it had turned out that way but uh, uh, and so was the DA <laughs> but uh, so we spent some time talking with him going over the case and the history. Uh, from he had a folder. This oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> he couldn't show us everything as, as far as sitting down and showing us everything, but we then went to the police department, and uh, he referred us actually to the planning department, and they didn't have the documentation. We went, then went to the police department and then spent, my gosh, another two hours, I guess, sitting mm -hmm. there going over hundreds of documents related to the Howard property and, and uh, saw pictures, letters back and forth from city and Mr. Howard back to the city. Um, and this case is not just a recent year or two case. This goes back 40 years. Yes. It first began years. in the 1970s. Uh, Mr. Howard, if some of you don't know, moved here onto that property, or at least one of those properties. He acquired others over the years. <clears throat> in 1957, before the city was incorporated, which was 1963. And uh, so anyway, we spent some time there. We also went out and met with Mr. Howard and spent, what, an hour or two About talking hour, to yeah. him. We didn't go on the property. We went around the uh, uh, perimeter of the property and then spent some time, extensive time, talking to him. We wanted to get both sides, you know, the, the city or the government side, the prosecuting side, and then the defendant side, Mr. Howard. And to be quite honest, uh, in our discussions that we had, he was pretty amiable. Yes. Individual. He didn't seem to be. Uh, he was not belligerent, belligerent or wild. In any way. No, he was. Uh, he was a gentleman, and <laughs> and he shared a lot of information with us, um, and and uh, he didn't seem full of animosity or hatred. Uh, uh. So uh, that's to encompass where we have now come to in our understanding of. Uh, the property that has uh, been in the news, been into the courts, and there's yet uh, two more cases. One, y yeah, and October 1st, which is a civil case, right? Down mm -hmm. in the no, uh, October September 1st is the infraction. Is okay. Infra yeah, let me let me see if I can okay. explain the the cases that um, he, uh, acquittal was obtained on. Uh, was all about public nuisance <coughs> and it had really nothing to do with the uh, um, code violations. Uh, and a public nuisance has a fairly high standard in, in for the uh, prosecuting attorney to establish. And the 
jury had no difficulty or was it was not like it was a, um, uh, a close call that they felt that that um, was was not met the standard was not met the the thirteenth charge was demoted to an from a misdemeanor to an infraction and that has to do with the code violations and that is coming up in October, 1st of October. On September 19th, although, although it, that will probably be moved because um, it's a civil trial over in Bakersfield having to do with the property being put in receivership. And uh, they really want all of the uh, legal case um, <coughs> adjudicated before they address that. So that will probably uh, um, be postponed from September 19th, but that's what it's scheduled for right now. All right, uh, let's get to our guest request. We only have a couple of minutes, and we'll, we'll continue on in, in after the break. But, Michael, why don't, why don't you start out first? And you've been pretty involved in observing what's been going on with Mr. Howard over the year, last year, for sure. Yes, well, over more than the last year, about the last two years, I've been in regular communication with Mr. Howard just because, it's number, number one, it's hard to track these through the court website. If you want to get detailed info, you've got to ask for records and pay, you know, 50 bucks to get transcripts and so forth. It's just a lot easier to talk to somebody. And obviously the, the city officials aren't going to talk much. Uh, so so I've, I've kind of kept up to date, uh, you know, through him. Uh, obviously some will say, well, I've got a slanted viewpoint because I've only been talking to him. Well, when I tell you about the trial, you'll, you'll see how the real evidence and the real facts all, all played out in this you know, kind of a saga, really, but you know, this has really been two years since they first charged Mr. Howard. Uh, it's gone on and on, you know, it's amazing that they can't bring simple misdemeanor charges forward to a trial, but uh, it appears that one of the strategies is to drag this on because that just makes the cost to the defendant tremendous, which it has been, uh, and of course the city officials don't care how much is spent on it, it's not their money, it's our money. So uh, that is definitely not true. We we care a great deal about how how quickly the court proceedings go on. Okay, before we continue with this, we got a break coming up. We're going to be back after the break. We'll continue to talk with Mr. Mike <coughs> and uh, Mr. Jim Sanders, City Councilman. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. Al Huey, Robert Ironman, we'll Thursday night, Rich Crest talks. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Ridgecrest Talk. We, before we left, uh, Mr. Neal was getting ready to explain his uh, uh, involvement with the history of Mr. Howard's uh, property. So continue on. And, and you had something to say also before we broke. Yeah, if, if I could just correct that one more time. We, we uh, as the council, we've been hounding our, our attorneys, uh, the city staff, to make this proceeding go as fast as possible. Uh, we, we want to give uh, the defendant a, a clear chance to prepare his case, but um, we have every interest in, in making this quick and, and as painless as possible and, and as cheap as possible. We don't want to drag up the cost at all. Sometimes maybe it's, it's the court. It's the court. It's just the way things okay. play out. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's uh, if you sat in on some of the hearings that I've sat in on, you would think they're not in any, in any hurry whatsoever to bring this forward because he's had probably... 15 hearings in the last 24 months and some of them he goes all the way to Mojave and they literally do almost nothing take five minutes and then they're done and then they move it to another day and it you know so I mean everybody can have their opinion my opinion one of the tools is to use the deep pockets of the taxpayers funds to drag it out and try to beat the person down now what deep case, pockets <laughs> <laughs> the city's but got very shallow pockets they have a lot more than Mr. Howard has available to him comparatively deep pockets yeah. comparatively yeah. I'll yeah. give you that the yeah. fact that Mr. Howard has had to revert to using public defenders because he's now out of money well he's, he's also went through several attorneys I mean there's there's been a lot of delays on, on everybody yeah, I, I think that the DA correct me if I'm wrong Al but didn't he say that there were 21 um, 
delays, um, 10 or 11 of it after the judge said there'll be no more delays. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my point. You just made it. Okay. Uh, before we proceed further, I just wanted to, for people who uh, haven't uh, refreshed their memories on this or maybe maybe you're not even real aware, uh, we live under the Constitution of the United States and the state of California, and all our public officials are sworn to uphold these. In Article 1, Section 1, <coughs> it's stated that all people are, by nature, free and independent and have inalienable rights, which means they are, they are rights given to them because they simply are a human being alive and breathing. These rights are given to them by God. And among these are enjoying and defending life and liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and pursuing and obtaining safety, happiness, and privacy. Okay, now, throughout the course of the trial, they continued to try to insist that this was not about property rights. The problem was, and the reason they lost uh, in almost everyone's opinion I've, I've asked about it, that was bothered to be there to observe, is that they brought these charges against Mr. Howard uh, for creating a public nuisance. And yet, the course of the entire trial, they only brought two witnesses to state that you know they thought he was a nuisance. One was actually entirely laughable, uh, totally unfounded. The rest of the time they spent using two city officials to verify one lot after the other, after the other, after the other, that he uh, committed vi uh, zoning and we violations. Say there, uh, you know, I said he moved here in '57 on one of those lots. He yeah. now has 12 lots. Right. Yes. Yeah. 12 properties I and 12 attendant charges on each lot. If I could jump right. in with the witnesses, in um, there were wi I don't want to name names, but there were witnesses that refused to come. I mean, it. Well, I couldn't believe it, and I was I was actually very yeah, disappointed we heard about, by that. We heard about that. Um, very disappointed by that. But some of the biggest complainers, uh, um, the ones that filed the most complaints, didn't show up to the trial. So, such as it is, if you can't get your witnesses, you can't make a case. Uh, so they didn't. They didn't simply. Uh, you know, they worked hard with. Uh, I thought there appeared was to be such nothing a thing to work called with. a subpoena. You could avoid a subpoena. Really? Yeah. Yeah, or you okay. can just simply tell them, you can subpoena me all I want, all you want, and I won't okay. answer your okay. questions. Okay. Well, yeah. in, in any case, they, they simply couldn't make their case. I, you know, so I brought some pictures of Mr. Howard's property that, that I took today. Uh, admittedly, this is today's pictures, and these charges were brought in, in 2012, but there were numerous statements in court that, you know, there's a lot, not a lot of difference between his property now and what it was like in, in 2012. So I'd like to show this is his, the shot at the front of his residence on Mayo Street. Am I holding this in the right place? Hang up there for just a second. Okay. okay. And, you know, it's not zoomed in really well, but... You go by there sometime, 1109 Mayo, take a look at it. See, if you lived out there, if you would be complaining that Mr. Howard is, uh, you know, creating a public nuisance. A uh, similar photo on his property, which faces Porter Street, uh, same, you know, decorative uh, palm trees and so forth. There, you know, there's fence there. Uh, on one end, he's actually created art mural which is the property on the east side of Mayo, which is on the south-facing part of that. And he's, he's somebody's going through and taking a lot of time to paint patriotic murals on the sea vans to beautify them. Uh, uh, this is going to be really hard to show. I may, somebody may have to like hold one end of it. I don't know how, how well this can be shown on the camera. Uh, this is like a panoramic uh, view of pretty much his entire property on the, the west side of Mayo Street. Uh, so... Like I say, I invite anybody to go out there and take a look at that. And after you l do look at that, I challenge you to, to say that this man is really causing a significant problem out there. Every single person I've ever mentioned this to, which have been a lot, who have ever been down there, they basically say, I don't see anything very wrong with those properties at all. What's behind the sea vans? Who cares? Nobody I, can see it. It uh, does. That, it does. Matter. It matters quite a bit. What's behind the sea van? Does it? Why? It does because it's in violation of the law. Of the zoning. Yeah, the sea vans are actually in violation. They are. They're too high, and they're too close 
to the edge of the property. And, so. and they're not on stable footing. They're on they're on really old uh, uh, railroad ties. Uh, I, I guess uh, who's, at this who's point, who's to say wind can't knock that over, or just ground eroding can't knock that thing right. over uh, and hurt somebody? I like and the state. I'm, I'm not defending the city here <laughs> or Howard. I'm just what we observed, <laughs> what we saw. I could see where the city is founded in in their argument. Okay. And, but I also, you know, <coughs> speaking of the C vans, we go back to 2008 or 9 with What's Bob that? Smith. Oh, 2006, uh, 7, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. We want to talk about that right after we come yes. after the break, these C vans, because there's some in, kind of interesting history there. Yes, yes there is. is. Don't go away. We'll be back shortly after this break. You're listening and watching mm -hmm. Ridgecrest Talk with Al Huey and Robert Ironman. The Thursday edition of Ridgecrest Talk. I'm Robert Ironman, along with Al Huey, and we have guests, Councilman Jim Sanders and Mike Neal. And we're talking about the Dale Howard uh, situation, um, and we're going to see if we can't wrap it up in these uh, last eight minutes. Um, okay. Who'd like to go first? Well, well, let's finish on the sea vans that we were talking okay. about. Okay, well, we, we were yeah. talking about the sea vans, and I, I do want to point out, and, and during the break I was talking to Councilman Sanders, and he also wants it brought up that there was a kind of, let, let me just phrase it, a negotiated settlement uh, of this back in the 2006, 7, and 8 time frame, and um, although the city did not like to do it, the code enforcement officer at the time suggested that as a necessary evil to resolve this situation, that the city allow <coughs> Mr. Howard to put in sea vans and to put up um, obscured fencing so that all of this stuff that he has on the properties would be not visible by the public. And um, that was done. And as you can see from the pictures, and, and if you saw pictures from 6, 7, and 8, uh, the improvement is, well, it's night and day. It, it, there's not even a way to compare them. Um, today it looks uh, agreed in violation of the code, but it looks cosmetically very nice, my opinion. Um, and so, anyway, we just wanted to point that out, that he did what the city asked, and then, as far as he's concerned, the city turned around and kept pinging on him. Well, the DA said that, that uh, what they had negotiated was not legal. Yeah. I agree it's not legal. Right. But well, I'm just trying but to point I, out the I, was, I was going to the moral and ethical right. right. aspect. Right. And, and, okay. and, and this happened not only in that case, but there were other uh, events where an agreement would be made between the city and Howard, and then somebody down the road later said, no, 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 you can't do that. And I understand. And I, I'm just coming so from the standpoint I'm, I'm getting you've at, got to be able to I trust I understand you, how Mr. Howard's frustration yeah. of finally drawing a line in the sand and saying, okay, guys, let's, let's do battle here in court. Exactly. You know? and, I, and I would, I understand that, that frustration. But the thing is, why couldn't that line be drawn in the sand way, way back when? When you look at the city code and say, "Yeah, I can't put, I can't put junk on a residential property. Yeah. I can't, I can't do that." You're right. But before that negotiated settlement, <laughs> Mr. Howard said, "I will move to the county," and he was told, "No, no, you don't have to do that." As opposed to spending money buying property, you can put in the C vans. He probably spent more on the sea vans than he would have on moving to the yeah, county. Yeah. And, and so what I'm saying is it bothers me that he was kind of like, in my opinion, betrayed by the city. He, he, you know, 
It was set up. That's what it was. Set up. He was. He was I, sandbagged. All those. Well, things. I don't know if he well, was. I, I'm, set, I was, I'm sure the like first. Set up. It's okay. Just, I'm it, sure the first stance of the city, the code enforcement officer, was obey the law, obey the code, and here's what the code says. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's what his starting position was. But now, it was a they negotiated. Of the, of the they, government. It, the it never should have been negotiated. It, 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 was, it was Mayor Cl Dan Clark and Mayor Chip Holloway that were <laughs> on that committee, mm -hmm. and this whole thing went through, and I, I don't know, I just feel betrayed if my city makes an <laughs> agreement with me, and uh, even though it's illegal, but but they said we don't like doing this, but this is the best solution to the problem. What happened to your word being in what you yeah, were going to stand is your bond. by? I mean, he had he had, and he was denied the opportunity to present this in the court. They said you can't, you cannot talk about this. You cannot show this affidavit by the former city official who told you you could keep your sea vans out there. They wouldn't allow him to talk about because it. Neither they would they allow him to talk about the fact that he was there before the city was. So. You know, they have zero grounds to continue to pursue this and try to, to bankrupt the man, in, in my opinion. And when it was all said and done, the jury saw through all of this, and they said the man's not guilty of creating a public nuisance. Right. Of course, now the worst part of it is that doesn't matter because he still has a civil suit coming upon his head where they're going to basically try to take his property away from him. No, that's not true. No. no, that is not true. That myth that myth has been thrown around so much, and it is just not true. Nobody's taking his property. Receivership is not ownership of a property. It's just cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. it, that's all it is. It's, it's a third party. It's not the city. Mm -hmm. It's a third party taking control of the property just long enough to clean it up and bring it up to code. Okay. And then it's given back. Once it, there's again, no I ownership will challenge transfer. anybody to get this document that has been filed. That, that's the filing of Jones and Mayer with the court in which they want to clean up the property. And when they're done, they want the cost of the cleanup. They want the lawyer's cost. They want the investigation costs. They want every dime they can get back from him. And that's going to be at least three quarters of a million dollars. Where is he going to get three quarters of a right, million so, dollars? So what Let me finish about this one point about the liens. You can say, we're not taking his property all day and all night long and on into next week. But when you cannot sell your property without them coming around with a big fat bill and saying, now pay us. It could have cost nothing. Property from you. Mike, it could have cost absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter compliance, what it could Compliance with the code, and that was completely his decision. It doesn't that was matter. completely his choice. It, it does matter. At this point. It matters not entirely. Because it could have cost the city, him, everybody, absolutely nothing. Well, now it's going to Because cost. everybody, everybody must comply with the law. And if we don't want to live by law, then let's move to another country. Because that's what this is about. Look, we talk about property rights. I am very concerned about his property rights. I'm, I'm very concerned about all the other property rights of the other property owners around there. Everybody's got right to property. And when we live this close in a city where we're so densely populated, we have to have laws to govern how our property rights affect other people's property rights. And those are zoning laws. Well, and if we don't want to comply by those, we need to go live where we don't have They brought two witnesses forth in the trial and said, I have no problem. He's a great guy. And so that's not a big Him deal. Him being a they great guy has one, nothing to do with it. One witness forward that said, oh, no, I don't like it. He's I, peacock. I think he is property. a great guy. That okay. has nothing to do with it. And they and didn't he's complain a very about nice his guy. property either. They had no problem with his property. There, there are they many two people who did. That count. How many complaints have there been in, in the city of Ridgecrest for, for from, from his property? You there's been me. a lot. I actually don't know the number. There's been yeah, a lot. There's been a lot. Well, the two and let me another fact in the trial. Here's yeah. another like fact that was brought forward in the trial, and that was that the the uh, defense attorney uh, acquired a, an investigator, and he went around and he talked to some of these people, and. The defense attorney brought up the fact that these we're complaints were seconds, solicited so We're going to have to wrap this police. up. Please join us next week for another session of Rich Chris Talk with Robert Ironman. Al Huey. And mm -hmm. thank our guests tonight for being here. Thank you it. so much for thank having me. Thank you, Robert. Yeah.